Well, the RNC convention is uh, over, and uh, I just wanted to comment on Clint Eastwood. Um, I'll tell you what, he did a bang-up job last night. He, uh, he came at it from a unscripted, unconventional method. Um, he was, I mean, just totally unscripted. But, you know, he made his point... You got the left-wing media, they're just losing their damn mind because, one, they don't have a sense of humor. Two, I don't think they picked up on the fact of what that empty chair symbolizes um, about the president. We've got an absentee president with all the things going on. He is just flying around the country, just racking up the miles, and just totally absent. This is a president that hasn't met with his cabinet, his full cabinet. Oh, what was it been for six months? His, you know, uh, this jobs uh, uh, board did he, or jobs panel he put together hadn't met with them. I mean, this guy is just absolutely unreal. He's just an absentee president. Um, but you know, think about it. I mean, here's a, you know, here's a guy. He's a Average, you know, I don't want to say an average citizen. I mean, you know, he's a he's a highly recognized celebrity who just came in there, used some humor, made some just incredible points, and uh, you know, uh, you know, it's refreshing to see some someone like that instead of something that's just polished and and scripted. And I understand, and you know, I mean, that's okay when you got a lot to say. You got to have a methodology to it. But it's just nice to see someone come up there, you know, speak off, you know, the top of his mind and make the points that he did. Um, you know, I, I, I don't know if uh, all of you watching this video now had uh, maybe just go YouTube if you haven't uh, seen Clint Eastwood's uh, speech and you'll understand what we're saying. You know, the liberals, you know, slash progressive slash socialist slash anti-capitalist. They're calling it bizarre. But, you know, these are the same people that, uh, you know, excuse the just the, the wretched things that come out of the mouth of Joe Biden. Um, you know, I mean, the thing about Clint Eastwood, he is right. This is our country. That these politicians are our employees. They serve at our leisure. So... Uh, you know, for those who have a problem with uh, you know, Clint Eastwood, get over yourself. Um, as to Mitt Romney, let me tell you, after all the digging that the Democrats have done, seriously, think about it. They came up supposedly with a high school prank where Obama and his friends cut some hippie's hair, and that when they went on vacation... Um, Mitt Romney put the family dog in a kennel on top of the, uh, the station wagon. And that he made money while working at Bain Capital. That's what they've come up with. I mean, they've even got the Democrats and the president. I mean, people like that calling him a felon, saying that he hasn't paid taxes. I mean, they just, they just absolutely, they lie at will. None of it's true. So after all that research, all that money, and all that stuff that they've accused him of, all they've got is... In high school, he cut somebody's hair, and he put the family dog in a kennel on top of the car. Now, I guess putting the dog in the kennel on top of the car is somehow worse than our president who actually ate dogs. I don't know. I see a little bit of a thing. But look at the personal speeches that were told there. You know, Mitt Romney's faith when he was a business owner. I mean, closing Bain and having the employees go search for a missing uh, a missing girl. Um, while he you know had his full-time job, he also served as a bishop in his church and spent you know that that type of personal time with that uh, daughter that was you know uh, born with you know many 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 birth defects. The compassion of that man is I think unrivaled by any individual that we've seen. Um, just, I mean, he, he is just all around a decent human being. Um, he's got a, a 
good, solid family background. Um, I mean, what 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 a story, you know, from from his upbringing to his marriage, and 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 Anne Romney, what what just a totally that is class. She is such a regal uh, she, uh, individual. She will make a just a phenomenal first lady. She is the epitome of grace and dignity, and she is one of the main factors why Mitt Romney is the man that he is. Um, you look at his children that have, you know, they've raised. And how dare Juan Williams say what he did, calling her a corporate wife. Juan, you are a dog. You really are. After the way you were treated by liberal networks and conservatives came to your rescue, for you to sit here and, and make such a outlandish comment. This is a woman that raised five boys. Five boys. And I know how rowdy I was as a kid. And she she raised them through uh, having breast cancer, raised them, you know, with MS. You know, she is so down to earth. You know, that's unbelievable. You know, why don't you go call Moochell, and I call her Moochell, because she mooches off the American people. She is just classless and nasty. Oh, you know what? Yeah, she, uh, excuse me there. She dons these, you know, nice, expensive, foreign-made gowns. And she walks out there like she's all glamour. And she works at soup kitchens with her, you know, thousand-dollar tennis shoes on. You know, and that's fine. You know, I guess, you know, if she bought it, that's fine. But when our first lady, while this economy is, is suffering, she has the audacity to spend this, what, $10 million just in the first two years on vacations? She puts her daughters down on a manifest as being uh, staff so that the taxpayers pay to take her kids to, where is it, Nairobi or something, and, and, and uh, you know, extended family? I mean, how classless of an individual is that? And let me tell you, I will. I would almost bet money that Mitt Romney doesn't take a cent of a paycheck as president of the United States. He didn't take money when he was governor of Massachusetts. He he did it because he wanted to serve. He didn't he didn't take a paycheck, and he did that. You know, if you know that Mitt Romney was offered after the 2008 uh, campaign. Um, when he stepped aside uh, for John McCain, that he was offered a $30 million a year job at a hedge fund. $30 million a year. He turned it down because he feels his calling is to serve this country. People don't know. Mitt Romney, his inheritance that he got from his father, he donated all of it to a business college. He is a self-made man. He didn't get anywhere because of his skin color. He didn't get anywhere other, by anything other than his, his own hard work. You know, um, but I'll tell you, just absolute, you know, you, you know what? I don't even want to try to compare the Obamas and the Romneys, period. They... I know Mitt's too classy to even say, you know, what I'm saying. He's too humble, I guess would be a better word. Um, but I think the facts need to come out. He's too humble to state these things. I'll be his mouthpiece. I'll say it because it's got to be said. You know, Mitt's faith does play a role in his life. That's, I mean, his compassion as a bishop and his responsibility to all the people in his, in his uh, ward um, so he not, I mean, he, he not only was responsible for them and for running, you know, the, uh, the, you know, the, the daily things that need to taken care of with the church at his, uh, bishop, you know, uh, level, you know, but he had his family, he had his, his career and he balanced them all. And the man does it with a smile. He does it with a twinkle in his eye and, you know, I, I, I wish someday I could just have five minutes to sit down and talk to that guy because I, I think he, he, he comes across, I mean, as just a, he comes across as a bishop. 
and a father and uh, a man who cares about this country and he cares about the people. He's a man with ideas. He's a man with integrity. And uh, I think that came out in the uh, the RNC uh, speech last night. Look, he may not be as polished as Obama, but you know, what good, I mean, Obama is like the gift wrapping on a box. You know, you can gift wrap a box, but when you open it and there's nothing inside, what good is the president, or the present? Obama, you know, Obama just, like I said, he's window dressing. He, does, he doesn't know what he's doing. He is, his ideology is totally wrong for that office. You know, and Mitt Romney, he's an artil uh, intelligent, articulate, educated person. But he's, he's humble enough to know that he doesn't know everything about everything. And I think what you need to do is look at who he surrounds himself with. He has wisdom. And... That wisdom will lead him to listen to whether it be generals or the people who have more experience in certain fields than he does. I mean, we have the president that listens to Valerie Jarrett making military decisions on whether or not he should take out Osama bin Laden. Since when is that, first of all, even... A, uh, a decision you should even have to think about. If you have an opportunity, you, you take him out. But why would you consult her? She's got no military background, but that's who he is. Compare and contrast. Do the work. You'll find out Mitt Romney um, should be, and I believe will be, the next president of the United States. So, Anyway, um, I know I kind of got off a little bit of a tangent there talking about Clint Eastwood. Funny stuff. You know, unless you're a liberal, then, uh, well, if you're a liberal that has any type of intelligence, you understood what he was saying. And, uh, you know, you're probably pretty upset about it. You're going to name call and and uh, everything else. But, um, again, I just thought it was, uh, overall, it was a real good convention. Um and uh, I look forward to the next, uh, what, 67 days um, th until we can uh, remove President Obama from office and restore the dignity and honor that comes with the presidency. Thanks again for watching.